Hurricane Katrina was devastating, but bad decisions made it worse than it had to be and in turn led to additional tragedies. Here are some messed up things that happened during Hurricane Katrina. Hurricane Katrina was a 2005 storm that affected the southeast coast of the United States. Although Louisiana and Mississippi were most heavily affected, Alabama, Florida, and Georgia also suffered casualties. Hurricane Katrina reached Category 5 strength in the Gulf Coast, and when it made landfall, it was a Category 3. Despite the reduced strength, though, it became one of the worst disasters in American history. National Geographic writes that the storm hit the coast of Louisiana on August 29th and ended up affecting up to 90,000 square miles of land and over 15 million people. And although hurricanes are usually only 300 miles wide at most, Hurricane Katrina's wind stretched out over 400 miles. In addition, the storm's wind speeds were well in excess of 100 miles an hour. Experts don't know exactly how many people lost their lives during Hurricane Katrina. One of the low estimates is around 1,800 people, and over a million people lost their homes and were displaced. Hurricane Katrina cost up to $161 billion worth of damage. This was largely due to the fact that the breached levees led to flooding in 80% of New Orleans. The outer ends of the hurricane also produced tornadoes, which damaged power lines and trees. After Hurricane Katrina struck, numerous federal officials, including President George W. Bush, claimed that there was little that could have been done to prevent the disaster. According to ABC News, the government had little warning before the hurricane, but subsequent investigations revealed that not only was there prior knowledge that the storm was going to hit, but that long-term warnings went unheeded. NPR reports that before Hurricane Katrina made landfall, Homeland Security Secretary Michael Chertoff, FEMA Director Michael Brown, and other top Homeland Security officials received emails on their Blackberries warning that Katrina Katrina posed a dire threat. However, little to nothing was done by FEMA in response, and President Bush even said on September 1st, I don't think anybody anticipated the breach of the levees. Yet days before Katrina hit New Orleans, the White House had in fact been informed that the levees were likely to breach. In 2004, the federal government sponsored a, quote, planning exercise involving local, state, and federal officials that resembled the eventual impact of Hurricane Katrina. However, the concerns raised by the exercisers were, quote, either ignored or inadequately applied. And despite the fact that many were long voicing their concerns about the effects of a hurricane in New Orleans, they were ignored until it was too late. Most of the damage caused by Hurricane Katrina was due to the fact that New Orleans levees and flood walls were breached. However, this didn't happen because the storm was too strong. It happened due to the failures of the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers. The Washington Post reports that the Corps cut costs and pinched pennies in order to save money in the short term. In addition, the engineering of the levees was of a, quote, disjointed fashion based on outdated data. Engineers also didn't consider sinking land and soil quality, which led to a misjudgment of soil stability. There was a, quote, maintenance regime theoretically in place for the levees. However, the Senate committee found it wasn't comparable to the risks involved. Yet this proportionately affected people of color. According to Talk Poverty, a black homeowner in New Orleans was more than three times as likely to have been flooded as a white homeowner. Socialist Alternative writes that the budget to the core was slashed after 2003, largely to pay for the Iraq war and tax cuts for the wealthy. A refusal to invest tens of millions of dollars into strengthening levies has led to a catastrophe that will cost hundreds of billions of dollars. Because of this short-sightedness, Hurricane Katrina was, quote, the nation's first $200 billion disaster. If the shoddy levies hadn't have failed, we wouldn't be talking about Katrina right now. Wow. Although up to 1.7 million people were evacuated in Louisiana alone, hundreds of thousands of people were stranded during the hurricane. This wasn't necessarily by choice, and as Vox writes, this was because they were too poor to afford a car or bus fare to leave. Plus, the hurricane evacuation plan stipulated that the main way people should evacuate the city was in their own vehicle. This left the state's most impoverished and vulnerable families, the majority of whom were people of color, without anywhere to go since they didn't have vehicles. And in New Orleans, the evacuation plan collapsed before the hurricane made landfall. Those without cars were, in theory, going to be picked up by city buses and taken two hours north of New Orleans. But the day before the hurricane hits, the roads became jammed up with a million fleeing residents. So the city of New Orleans instead decided to temporarily house people in the Superdome. Only after Katrina passed were people going to be bused to shelters. But after the levees broke, the city buses went underwater. As a result, thousands of people became stranded at the Superdome. Still, thousands more ended up on the roofs of their homes as floodwaters reached heights of 20 feet. Between 20,000 and 30,000 people in New Orleans were evacuated to the Mercedes-Benz Superdome, and despite the fact that this was meant to be a temporary shelter, they ended up being stranded in the stadium for a week. Initially, the Superdome was described as a, quote, lawless, depraved, and chaotic place with reports of numerous murders. 
However, it was later found that despite the poor conditions in the Superdome, it was not the, quote, murderous hellhole it was reported to be. The Society Pages writes that there were six deaths in the Superdome, one by suicide, one by overdose, and four from natural causes. NBC News reports that although there were stories of freezers full of bodies, in fact, they did not exist. Due to the sensationalist stories regarding the Superdome, The Guardian reported that the rumors were used to justify, quote, turning New Orleans into a prison city. The Superdome was woefully inadequate for housing the thousands of evacuees. The backup generator for the lights was barely able to be kept afloat. Then the water supply gave out and the toilets, quote, began to overflow. With the failure of the air conditioning, temperatures inside the Superdome reached the high 90s with heavy humidity. The food inside the freezers had soon rotted and the horrid smell was everywhere. Out of the at least 1,800 deaths caused by Hurricane Katrina, nearly half were elderly people, and it's possible that the deaths may even number as high as 10,000. The White House writes that by February 2006, there were still over 2,000 people who were counted as missing. Many are still missing over 15 years after the storm. According to NBC News, the average age of victims was 69, and just under half of all victims were 75 or older. The Social Science Research Council writes that this disparity occurred because elderly people were neither evacuated nor protected effectively. This was especially clear in the poor evacuations of nursing homes. In fact, over half the homes decided against early evacuation. Across 13 nursing homes and six hospitals that were investigated in Louisiana, at least 140 patients died as a result of Hurricane Katrina. At St. Rita's Nursing Home, residents were reportedly abandoned by the staff and 35 people drowned as a result. The owners, Salvador and Maybel Mangano, ended up facing the only criminal charges directly related to Hurricane Katrina. They were charged with negligent homicide due to their refusal to evacuate their residents. They were acquitted in 2007. George Bush doesn't care about black people. Everyone remembers Kanye West's infamous comment, but the issue ran far deeper than just the feelings of the president. The fact that black homeowners were more likely to face flooding than white homeowners wasn't an accident or bad luck. As Talk Poverty notes, it was directly due to, quote, racially discriminatory housing practices. This meant that the high ground was taken by the time banks started loaning money to African Americans who wanted to buy a home. As a result, most minority communities ended up living in neighborhoods that were cheaply built and in areas more susceptible to flooding. And in the Senate committee reports, race isn't mentioned once in over 700 pages. In the aftermath of Hurricane Katrina, black families have also had a harder time rebounding than white families. The black middle class in particular was all but wiped out, and black household incomes have fallen. The black population of New Orleans has also fallen, since out of the 175,000 black residents who left New Orleans, over 75,000 never returned. Before Hurricane Katrina hit Louisiana, there were roughly 2,000 foster kids registered in the state. Two weeks after the storm, 25% of the children remained unaccounted for. Up to a month after Hurricane Katrina, over 100 children were still unaccounted for. It took until November to find everyone. One of the biggest issues was communication, since landlines weren't working and cell towers were down. But finding the children was only part of the battle. Many offices were submerged along with their records and computerized records were minimal. According to the then Assistant Secretary of Children Welfare for Louisiana's Department of Social Services, Marquita Walters, New Orleans was notorious for not doing good data entry. Meanwhile, foster families struggled to get prescription medication for their children. PBS reported, because medical care for foster children is paid for by in-state Medicaid, accessing prescription drugs was complicated. Apart from the foster children, roughly 5,000 additional children were listed as missing in the Gulf Coast region after Hurricane Katrina. According to CBS News, it took until March 2006 to find all of them and, quote, all but 12 were found alive. Ultimately, it's unknown exactly what the death toll of Hurricane Katrina was. According to the scholarly article, Deaths Directly Caused by Hurricane Katrina, the authors note that about one-third of those deaths were due to drowning. Up to 47% were, quote, caused by acute and chronic diseases. Mother is 83 years old. She's in dire need of her heart medication. There's no medical services here. She's on the floor. She's dying right now. It's also believed that many of these deaths could have been preventable if emergency and hospital services hadn't been as disrupted as they were. Despite the strength of Hurricane Katrina, there was little about the storm that made it intrinsically deadly. Instead, the deadliness came as a direct result of people's decisions, the engineering of the levees, and the poor evacuation plans. In addition, according to the journal Social Science and Medicine, there was also long-term mental health consequences of Hurricane Katrina. Although post-traumatic stress syndrome showed a decline in the years after the hurricane, quote, one in six still had symptoms. The federal response to Hurricane Katrina was just as bad as state and local responses. 
President Bush announced that New Orleans had, quote, dodged a bullet just hours before three major levees were breached. However, the Louisiana governor, Kathleen Blanco, had already requested federal assistance two days before the hurricane hit. And when the levees were breached, there were only two FEMA workers on the ground. It took two days for a thousand more FEMA officials to arrive. And once they did, the evacuations were slowed down because of FEMA's complicated paperwork. In addition, when the Louisiana National Guard asked FEMA for 700 buses to help with the evacuation, only 100 were sent in response. NOLA.com reports that FEMA turned away offers of personnel and supplies from the Department of Interior and denied their request from the State Wildlife and Fisheries Agency for 300 rubber boats. During the recovery stage, the process wasn't much better. FEMA infamously brought in trailers to house people after the hurricane that were, quote, hastily built and steeped in toxic resins. Although they were meant to be used for 18 months, they were still in use up to six years after the hurricane. And although they were deemed unsuitable for habitation, little has been done to ensure that people no longer live in toxic trailers. As some people tried to get supplies to survive, the media portrayed them as, quote, looters. This is a term that the LA Times notes as more often applied to black people than white people. In addition, the media used unverified reports to portray New Orleans as a lawless place filled with violence. Therefore, police were redirected against the imaginary violence rather than towards rescue efforts, and they were given authorization to shoot looters at will. Governor Blanco herself stated, These troops know how to shoot and kill, and they are more than willing to do so if necessary, and I expect they will. In addition to two unarmed civilians killed at Danziger Bridge, at least 10 other people were shot by police in the first week after the storm. Yet another sad legacy of the institutional failures surrounding Hurricane Katrina. Check out one of our newest videos right here. Plus, even more grunge videos about your favorite stuff are coming soon. Subscribe to our YouTube channel and hit the bell so you don't miss a single one.